All right, good students, we're picking up where we left off here. This would be video number three. We are just got done with explaining what primase does. So I'm going to put some of this back in here. So recall that primase laid down a new primer in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So remember, it builds in a 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And this side over here was going to lay down that 5' prime to 3' prime direction as well. So this is going to do it in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, another enzyme is going to come along, and it's going to say, hey, I think I found a primer here. A primer means like a starter, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to pick up from that point. So remember, the primers only lay down about 5 to 10 nucleic acids, and then it's up to this thing called DNA polymerase 3. It's abbreviated POL3, DNA polymerase 3. And it's named 3 because it was discovered third, but it actually happens first, so it's another one of those weird twists in biology, Okay. So DNA pull 3, it finds the primer, and it continues on from that point. And again, it pairs DNA nucleotides. This time it does DNA. So it does the A's, the C's, the G's, the T's. And it builds again in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Same exact direction again. That's going to be a common theme. So it picks up where this thing left off, and it starts moving in this direction, 5 prime to 3 prime. And as long as there's space for it to move, it will continue to move. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's it's just going to zip along here, and it's going to lay down all this stuff, and it's going to get down to here. This is the replication fork. It's going to get down to that point, and it has to wait for helicase to unzip more and peel back and open up more DNA, and it has to wait for topoisomerase to relieve the, the tension and the stress, but it just keeps going along. In other words, it continues towards the replication fork as best as it can or as fast as it can. Um, that's around 900 base pairs per minute, per minute. So pretty quickly, but not blazing fast. Um, another one is going to be down here, and it's going to work in this direction too, and I'll draw the arrow here in a second, but it's going to work in that direction as well, in 5' prime to 3' prime direction, okay? So that's going to be the role of pole 3. I'll pause there for a second. You guys can get caught up with your drawings. You can get caught up with everything else, but realize that pole 3's main job is to lay down DNA once it finds a primer, okay? And then uh, I'm going to move forward here, and you guys can pause. All right, moving on to the next one here. Then, um, again, we've got our primer that's already laid down up top here. So I'll use my pen, and the primer gets laid down. And then remember that the pole 3 comes in and lays down its matching up stuff. And remember, we're we're building new DNA here, right? I'm not drawing all of them in there but we're building new DNA in, a, in all of here, right? Well, pole one has a job. It replaces RNA with DNA. It recognizes that RNA shouldn't be there. It's it's like a, it, it's a misspelled word, right? It's, it's spell checking, basically. So it goes along the DNA strand and it finds any places that have RNA and it's gonna swap out RNA for DNA. So these little buggers right here, this little enzyme called uh, DNA polymerase one is going to identify this thing and it's going to move along the strand and it's going to replace all of the rna in a five prime to three prime direction so it's going to come along and, and again i'll kind of animate this as best i can here so it's going to fly in it's going to come along it's going to attach down here and it's going to work from five prime to three prime and it's going to end up down here and so what's going to end up happening is as it moves down that strand it's going to kick out the uh the, the red rna pieces it's going to eject them it's going to get rid of them and it's going to replace them with blue DNA nucleotides. So it's going to replace them with the correct uh, stuff. So the RNA gets kicked out and the DNA gets put in place. And again, down here on the bottom, the same exact thing would occur. So um, I will just quickly draw that in there. And uh, you guys can watch this again. Remember the primer or primase laid down the primer. And then we had our DNA pull three that came along and picked up and, and worked towards the replication fork. And now what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have this pull one is gonna go, hey, wait a second, I'm gonna hop on board here and I'm gonna move in this direction, five prime to three prime. And as I move along, I'm gonna take these red pieces and I'm gonna kick you out of here. I'm gonna eject you, you're gonna go away because you don't belong, you're RNA, you're not DNA. And I'm gonna replace you with DNA. So I'm gonna kind of bold in over this so that I can show that this is new DNA. Now, when it gets done, it does leave a little bit of a problem. And that problem is at the very end here, at the very end where it stops, there's a little tiny gap. And that gap can't be um, fixed by pole one. And that's going to be our next step. Okay, so I'll pause there. 
and uh, you can get your notes and get caught up on your drawings, and then we'll move forward. Okay, next one is going to be ligase. Ligase is an enzyme that glues gaps between those DNA segments together. So without drawing everything here, without kind of going through all the, the process, remember that DNA pull one just replaced, but it left a gap between where that um, where that primer was and where it got replaced, right? So there's a new, there's a little gap there. And, and ligase's main job, it's its only job, and we'll actually use ligase in a, in a lab in the, in the classroom, um, will be to glue. So it, it hovers over these little gaps and it glues these little pieces together. So it takes and it glues these pieces together. Now it doesn't glue it, obviously it's not magic, it's chemistry. It just basically is an enzyme that shoves two components of the DNA strand together and makes sure that the sugars and the phosphates all um, bond together. So this ligase right here, uh oh, where'd my, there it is. Um, that ligase right there works down there and glues that one. Okay. So the question that you should have is, okay, so we've, we've made new DNA along here. So we've got a whole new strand, a double strand of DNA here, and we've got a whole new double strand of DNA here. And it was, you know, the same as the originals. So like this, this half here and this half over here, they used to be bound together, but now we've got a, a, a nice pairing down on the bottom here. And, um, but w w what about these spots? Like, what the heck? What's going on here? Why, why haven't we filled in anything here? Well, there's going to be um, a, 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 an issue that comes up here. And that issue can be taken care of with the, the next explanation. I'll do it right now just on this screen, and then I'll kind of move forward just so I have more drawing space. But you got to realize that this whole thing is it's the same thing no matter what. So we got primase that is looking for a place to start. Now let's say that primase starts right here. Primase is going to start right here. Which direction is it? Well, it's going to go this way on this strand. But you got to realize that as that thing is going this way, this whole part right here is continuing to open up because helicase is moving on our diagram here to the left and it's opening up more stuff. So primase has to lay down its primer and then it has to hop off and it has to work backwards. It has to hop on maybe back here and lay a new primer down. So what we find is on one side of the DNA strand, on one side of the DNA strand, like this side, there's just this continuous strand of new DNA being built. It's all wonderful. Everything works great because pole three works towards the replication fork. But when you're working away from the replication fork, you have to build a little and then come back and build a little and then come back and build a little and you have to constantly do that. And so what this, what ends up happening here is that you end up with, oh boy, that's a terrible drawing. You end up with multiple primers on this side, on this strand here. And then those primers get worked on and, you know, they get picked up by pole three until it hits the next primer and then it stops and it falls off. And then pole three hits the next primer and stops and falls off. And then pole three starts again and it hits the next primer and stops and falls off. And then pole one has to work multiple times here. So pole one has to replace and replace and replace. So what we end up with is little tiny fragments of DNA that get built at a time. Why is that going that way? Because it's going away from the replication fork. And why? Why can't it just go the other way? Because everything works in five prime to three prime direction here. And in this side, on this, in this case, on this side of the DNA ladder, um, five prime to three prime is away from the replication fork. And the same thing's gonna happen up here. We're gonna have little fragments of DNA that are built in segments as the thing opens up. These little fragments are called Okazaki fragments. So there's the term, Okazaki fragments. The side that can get built continuously towards the replication fork, and realize it's on both sides, towards the replication fork, that's called the leading strand. That's the leading strand. So I'll let you identify that. The other portions that get built in like little pieces, right? They get built like a little piece this way, a little piece this way, you know, back up and okay, we got to do this piece. When they get built in pieces, um, they're called Okazaki fragments and those pieces slow the whole process down because it, it takes longer for everything to keep going. On the leading strand, you only need one primer and you only need one pole three and then the whole thing just zippity-doo-dah is done. 
Um, on the other side, called the lagging strand, it's lagging behind. It's just so slow because it has to keep continually putting new primer down, using pull three, falling off, using pull one, using ligase multiple places. It, it takes a long time. So that is the lagging strand. Now, many students think like, okay, so I got it. I, a simple way to memorize this. Leading strand is bottom right. Leading strand is bottom right, and leading strand is top left. Got it. I, I got it. That's that's simple. But that all depends on how the diagram is labeled. Notice that if I take this thing, and I'll use I'll use yellow here just to kind of mix things up a little bit. Um, if I break this thing in half, oh my gosh, that yellow doesn't even work. All right, I'll use green. There, there. If I break this thing in half, if I kind of look at this from two halves, right? If this is five prime down here. If this is five prime down here, and I follow this along, this means that I've got five prime right here throughout. That means that anything to my left over here is five prime, and anything to my right over here is three prime. So I'm just going to label this that I'm always leaning five prime this way, and I'm always leaning three prime this way. That means that new strands would be built in this direction, and this would be the leading strand then, because it works towards the replication fork. And these would be the lagging strands that they would be built in little segments. Those would be the lagging strand. But what if the diagram was slightly different? What if I, you know, again, draw my imaginary line down the middle here. Here's my five prime again, but now five prime is going to follow the bottom strand. So that means that everything over here is five prime and everything over here is three prime. That means that new strands get built this way which would be opposite here, which would mean the leading strands, continuous strands, are bottom left now and, and top right. So you really have to think about the fact that, well, don't memorize it as bottom left, top right. Uh, think about five prime, three prime. Think about, okay, is it working towards a replication fork or away from it, okay? So that's that whole leading strand, lagging strand thing, and it's all based on five prime and three prime directionality. Here's a checkpoint for you. I'll pause uh, for you guys to pause it, and then I'll answer the questions here in a second. Okay, so putting the following in order, you should have come up with um, helicase and then topoisomerase, and then primase lays down a primer, and then you got pull three, and then pull one spell checks and gets rid of the RNA, and then ligase glues the whole thing together. Okay, so then you should be able to name those primary functions. Again, you can go back through them. Um, I think they're they're pretty evident. Um, but helicase, unwind, unzip, topoisomerase is reduced stress, primase to lay down a primer, pull three to uh, lay down DNA, and then pull one to spell check and replace any RNA, and ligase to glue it all together. And uh, which direction do all the enzymes work? They always work in five prime to three prime. And you have to identify that they build in five, pi five prime to three prime. You can't just look at the strand and go, well, that's five prime, that's three prime. It's going to go that way. It actually uses the template strand and goes opposite of what you think because it's building five prime to three prime. And then um, what is the uh, difference between leading and lagging strands? Leading strands are continuous towards the replication fork and lagging strands are building away from the replication fork, and they have to build it in little tiny segments called Okazaki fragments. And then finally, um, is the following meet? Of course it is. That's, that's duh. Okay. So uh, one more video to go, and I will leave it there, and we will see you for video number four.